have a special guest with me. Her name is Miriam, she's from Germany. And today she's gonna tell us a bit about what she studies, that is biomedicine. And in particular, inside biomedicine, doing research in infectious diseases. So, hi Miriam, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for inviting me to your channel, Mel. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. My pleasure! How did you discover you wanted to pursue a career on these topics? Like, tell us a bit of the story. Um, so, I first started to get interested in science um, when I had a biology class that went into molecular biology. So for the first time I was learning what is going on in the cell, how do genes, the DNA and RNA within us, how do they um, yeah, define how we look, what uh, our health is like and how do they yeah, completely define our whole, whole body. Uh, and I figured out that the more deeper you dig into biology, the more interesting it gets. Um, so that's how I started to get interested in a career or yeah, a life as a scientist. Um, and after considering it for several months and like during the last two years maybe of my, my high school, um, I decided, yeah, this is really, uh, what I find most interesting and this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to become a biomedical researcher. Um, but first, of course, I had to find a study program that would fit my needs and my interests. Um, and I was first looking into programs that were called biochemistry or molecular biology. But all of these programs, they were either really heavy on chemistry um, or they were more like a regular biology class with um, studies on plants and animals and all that kind of stuff. And that was not really what I was interested in. I was more interested into human beings. I wanted to learn how we as human beings function on a molecular level and how diseases develop on a molecular level. Uh, and then someone pointed me towards the term biomedicine and said, hey, look for programs in biomedicine. Um, and then I found something at the University of Würzburg, which is a yeah, medium-sized town in, in Germany. And they offered a program that was really to my liking. I also went to this university for an information day where students can get um, yeah, more information about different study programs. And that really convinced me that this is uh, the right program for me because it was featuring um, natural sciences like bio biology, chemistry, physics, etc. But also medical courses um, that were even shared with the medical students. Um, and yeah, overall a really a focus on these um, molecular biology. So after finding um, this biomedical program, um, I found that there were even more options than I initially thought. Um, there are several universities that offer programs in biomedicine or molecular medicine, which is kind of a synonym for biomedicine. Um, but eventually I just uh, stuck with Würzburg because I really liked the university and the program it offered. When I had to choose my career, I had a similar situation as you. Uh, but in my, in my country there are, I would say, three main careers that would adapt to this, like biochemistry, biology and then there was a new newer career like human biology that is similar to this so i understand the struggle <laughs> yeah i was in the same situation it's really cool that germany has all these options and biomedicine is such a broad topic did you specialize in something in particular so we did have some options to choose during the bachelor program but that was limited because we were a small class um, I did choose uh, topics like microbiology and virology because I found those very interesting, also immunology. And my bachelor thesis was actually done um, on salmonella, so bacterium and how it, um, RNA influences its pathogenicity. But I did not want to continue with a master's program right away because still I had the feeling uh, I need more practical experience in research. I wanted to know is this really the thing that I want to do for the rest of my life? Um, so after my bachelor thesis, I continued with one year of internships, which was unusual. But I just wanted to um, have a look into different subjects and different labs in different countries and gain more research experience. Um, yeah, during that year, I found out, yes, research is the thing that I want to do for the rest of my life and uh, this is what I want to have a career in. And I also found out um, what, which topics I'm most interested in. And what program did you end up choosing for the master's? Um, so, immunology and infection biology have been very interesting to me since my bachelor's and um, I found out this is really the, the two most interesting topics for me and then therefore I chose a master program that is specific to these two topics. So now I'm a master's student in the program Medical Immunoscience and Infection at the University of Bonn and I think I really found a perfect fit for my interests here. 
Oh, that's great! <laughs> I think this topic is really, really interesting. It's really cool, but can you tell us, especially also for the people that are watching that maybe they are not in the topic, uh, what is exactly this field of infection biology? What does a infection biology researcher do? So when we think of an infection, we usually have two sides. So one side is the pathogen and the other side is the host. So some people only study one side. For instance, they look at a certain pathogen. This could be a virus, a bacterium, a fungi, or it could be another form of parasite. Um, so there are people who specialize in these um, pathogens. And then there are people who study the host response to these um, pathogens. Uh, but what I personally am most interested in is how these two interact. So host-pathogen interactions would be the key word for what I am most interested in. Um, because a lot of pathogens have really developed very smart techniques, or they didn't develop them, they, they evolved to have these really cool techniques to evade the immune system, um, or to trick the immune system to treat them differently, or to even help them to establish an infection within their host. And I think this is super cool and very interesting. Um, and yeah, a lot of pathogens have very unique and special uh, methods to trick their host into keeping them. <laughs> and yeah, I love that. It's very interesting. <laughs> Yes, it's very interesting, um, but depending on the host and the pathogen that you are talking about, maybe so the, there's a lot of diversity, so do you have any favorites, do you have any, anyone that you would like to specialize in or study? So my PhD will be about tuberculosis and I will look at the host pathogen interactions between tu the mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, and its host. Um, but in the past I've also done a little bit of research on viruses, the cytomegalovirus, and how this um, virus uses its proteins to evade the human immune system or the immune response. And yeah, I'm still very early in my career, so I haven't decided on what's my favorite pathogen yet. There are so many different pathogens out there and they're all unique and different and very interesting. So um, I cannot promise you that uh, I will always stick with one. Ah, since you mentioned your PhD topic, do you know already uh, where, where are you going to do your PhD or which program? Yes, I do. Uh, during my last year of master studies, I applied to the International Max Planck Research School for Infectious Diseases and Immunity. That's quite a long name. <laughs> uh, we call it IMPRESS IDI, just uh, short. Um, and I will be working at the Max Planck Institute for Infection Biology in Berlin. So my position starts in two months and I'm very excited uh, to be, yeah, going there. <laughs> That's really nice, congratulations! Thank you! Yes. So you mentioned that there's this program, Infectious Diseases and Immunity, there's this Max Planck Institute in Berlin that is specializing in infectious diseases. Um, even though it's, uh, maybe it's a bit obvious uh, right now to ask, but uh, just in case for whoever is watching that maybe they uh, come from different backgrounds, can you say some words on what's your opinion on the importance that we have this kind of uh, research centers, that we have this kind of programs uh, forming young researchers on these particular fields? Yes, so infectious diseases are still a problem also in industrialized societies. Uh, we do not only have to think about COVID, but to think about a lot of other diseases that you probably know, like HIV um, or tuberculosis. And we also have a lot of problems with smaller virus when we think of organ transplantation. More people die from infections after an organ transplantation than from the reduction of an organ, for instance. And also we see antibiotic resistances on the rise. Also those can be addressed by new mechanisms that can be found through the research in infection biology. So. I think it is a very an important topic that we should dedicate institutes and research to. Yes, I completely agree. I also wanted to ask you, do you have any tips, any um, comments, if there's someone that is listening to us that wants to pursue a career on this topic, like what would you advise to future scientists watching this or students? <laughs> So first I would say be open-minded about the different topics during your studies because there are so many different pathogens and there's so many different subfields that are very interesting. Uh, I would just recommend to have a broad look at everything and be curious um, about everything at first. I also can highly recommend doing research internships um, before deciding on a master's or before deciding for a field of study. Um, because that really helped me to um, confirm my idea that I want to do really research, that this is something I want to do and I think 
this can help people decide if this is something they enjoy and it also really helps to strengthen your skill set and it's very attractive for future employees. Finally, I really want to encourage you to go into science. For instance, with infection biology, you can really have a positive impact on society and I think it's a valuable thing to dedicate your life to science. Yeah, that's a very nice enough message. Thank you. I really encourage people to look more into this area of research because it's really, really cool. And those were all the questions that I have for you today. So thank you very much for giving your time for this. Thank you very much for having me. I'm very happy to share my story. Yeah, it was very nice to have you here. <laughs> and thank you for your attention, for watching, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.